Autism spectrum disorder is one of the most commonly diagnosed neurodevelopmental disorders worldwide. However, relatively little is known about some of the neurobiological mechanisms that underpin the disorder and that underpin many of the difficulties that autistic people experience on their day-to-day -day lives. In recent years, a number of Bayesian brain perspectives or predictive processing accounts of autism argue that the disorder stems from impairments in the ability to integrate prior information with current sensory feedback. So impairments in the ability to make and or use predictions. This study aimed to specifically test these hypotheses in the context of sensory motor control, as autistic people commonly experience difficulties relating to sensory disturbances or movement coordination. So we examined these objectives during the simple daily living skill of object lifting. Here we asked participants to lift objects that differed in physical size and mass whilst we tracked their hand movements, their eye movements and their fingertip force profiles using a combination of OptiTrack motion capture technology, Pupil Labs mobile eye tracking technology and force transducers that were inbuilt into our object lifting handle that you can see in the video here. And we looked at the relationship between these outcome measures and self-reported autistic-like traits in a large general sample in experiment one, before then conducting a more refined between-group analysis in experiment two, where we compared specific prediction-related outcomes between autistic and neurotypical groups that were age-matched and gender-matched. During each lift, participants were faced with one of four lifting objects. And these differed in physical size and mass. But what you can see in this figure here is that some of the different size objects were actually the same weight. And this allowed us to isolate the specific role of prior expectations on perception and action. So unsurprisingly, both autistic and non-autistic participants self-reported before the experiment that they expected larger objects to be heavier than smaller objects. And so what we are then able to do is examine how these prior expectations influence movement and sensory sampling behaviours. According to Bayesian brain perspectives of autism, if prior expectations are attenuated in autistic participants, we would therefore expect there to be reduced influence of these expectations on lifting movements and on sensory sampling behaviours. Surprisingly, however, there was very little autism-related effect shown in either experiment. So if we take this figure from experiment two, we can see that the perception of object weight and peak grip force rate and peak load force rate profiles over time were comparable in both groups. If we just focus on this peak grip force rate and peak load force rate data from panel C to F, we can see that on initial trials, participants in both groups tended to lift the heavy looking objects, so the larger ones, with more force than the lighter objects. So this suggests that prior expectations were having a similar impact on action behaviours in both groups. Similarly, there were no prediction related effects in any of our kinematic variables in experiment one. And broadly in our gaze visual search rate pattern shown in experiments one and experiment two. Nevertheless, there were some subtle differences in visual sampling behaviours shown in experiment two that appeared to be context sensitive. Specifically, as you can see in this figure here, neurotypical participants tended to increase gay search rate as tasks became more uncertain. Such differences did not appear to be shown in autistic participants. However, further research is required to examine these effects in a bit more detail. So we believe that these findings have some really exciting implications for the field of autism research. Our results suggest that autistic people are able to combine prior information with current sensory feedback across multiple sensory motor levels during this task. And this goes against a number of more traditional Bayesian brain perspectives of the disorder, which argue that there's broad impairments in predictive processing. Instead, our results support or provides preliminary support for a number of more recent context sensitive predictive processing accounts. And we discuss these in a little bit more detail in the main text, and we talk about some future areas of research that can specifically test these in the context of sensory motor control. And we remain really excited about this area of research that could have some major clinical implications. We think that by being able to understand what causes sensory and motor difficulties in the disorder, we'll be better placed to prevent these difficulties from occurring in autistic people's day-to-day -day lives. And we'll be able to develop 
better evidence-based programs and clinical interventions for the applied autism community.